I will walk you through all the blog post settings that you need to know about for each blog post you write. So I'm here in the Clove demo template. It's my favorite Squarespace template. I'll put a link to it below. And let's go ahead and hop over to the blog. So you can see I have a list of blog posts here, and then I can also click on a blog post and get into the post here. Now there are two different ways to get to the blog post settings. There used to be a third, but it's gone now. So I'll show you, um, if you're looking for it, I'll show you where it used to be so you're not confused. So if you click edit on the blog post, there used to be a cog icon up here in the upper right that you could use to get to the blog post settings. That's the one I always used and it's gone now. So instead there's a paintbrush which will take you to the global site style, so fonts and colors and that sort of thing. So if you want to change your blog post settings when you're inside the post, you can click on the title of the post at the top and that will get you to the blog post settings. Alternatively, if you're just in this blog post list, you can click on the three dots to the right of the title and click settings. That, those are the two ways that you can get to the blog post settings. Now, once we're here, we'll just walk through each of these settings. So under content, we have a few options here. Status is whether your blog post is live. So if you want it to be live on the web, you'll want it to be published. So you can see this post was published on August 6th, 2020. Some other options. If I am working on a post and I'm not quite done, I wanna come back and revisit it before I schedule it to publish, you can choose draft. So that saves your post as it is, but it's not live. You can also set it to needs review. So if you're working with a team and somebody else needs to review the post, needs review is a good option. Also, you can schedule a post to go out on a future date. So this is something that I do in my business. I often write more than one blog post in a sitting and I want to schedule them so they're not both live on the same date. I want Google to think, hey, she publishes a post every week and um, that will make me pay attention because I know to expect new content from her. So what I do is I use the scheduled and we'll just I have to find a date here in the future. So I could schedule this to go out for Friday, March 19th if I wanted, or any time in the future after that, you can also set the time of day using this slider. So those are the options for status of your post. Now, if we go back to our content menu, we can also set tags and categories here. Now tags and categories are ways to organize your blog content. Tags are really detailed things. So for example, if you were um, writing blog posts about recipes, then your tags here would be maybe some of the ingredients like chicken, carrots, um, dates. I have no idea what would be in that recipe. Um, maybe not those things together. And for categories, those are the larger buckets that your post would fall into. So it might be entrees or snacks or drinks, things like that. So you can use those to organize your blog post so that if someone is interested in coming and looking at entrees, they'll click entrees and they can see all of those together. Um, a note here, and just a quick aside, when you're setting up your blog, I always, let me cancel out of this and show you um, something else. So when you're setting up your blog, the blog itself has settings. And if you click the cog icon and go to SEO, and scroll down to the bottom, I always hide the category pages and the tag pages from search. Otherwise, Squarespace creates a page for every tag you use and every category you use. And from what I've read, it seems like that actually can harm your SEO because now there are all these additional pages and Google kind of gets confused about that. Um, so I just make it a habit of turning off those pages do keep all the pages in the collection. Those are your posts. Definitely don't hide those from SEO. So just a note there on the categories and tags. So let's hop back to our blog post settings where we were. We talked about tags and categories. Comments. So you can turn on comments for a blog post. So let me do that here. And you'll see that it didn't appear here. And the reason is I turned them on for this post, but they're not turned on globally. So let's go back to settings, blogging, and then comments settings. And if I enable comments globally, 
and save it, then we'll see it appear here eventually. Um, there are a lot of options here that you can just go through and um, take a look at, but let's go back to edit here. Um, let me get to my settings this way. Comments are on, save, done, and now we see our comments box at the bottom. So we turn them on globally and we turn them on for the post. Sometimes you have to give it a minute. I always get impatient and toggle that back and forth like I'm you know, waiting for an elevator. So comments are on and you can just click here to take you to that comment setting as, as well, but I wanted to show you where to find it um, in addition. So you can also duplicate a blog post. So if you have a blog post that you're kind of using as a template and you wanna switch things out, you can duplicate it and just switch out you know, all the elements in it. I rarely do that, but if you, know, if you have a certain set way that you set up each post, that may work for you. So if you wanted to delete the post, you could do that here as well. Um, it will put it in a little bucket. Let me show you where that is. Uh, save this, done. So if we go to pages and blog, there is, let me delete this guy. There's a little recycle bin down here. And if you click that, you can restore this and put it back. So that was that setting. So let's publish this again. Um, so after it rolls it back, it puts it in draft. And let's go back to our settings and keep going. So we talked about everything here under content. Options is another big one. So let's walk through options. So first of all, for your blog post, you'll want a thumbnail image. Now this is not necessarily any image that's in your post. It is something that you upload specifically to be the thumbnail. It can be something from your post, but you have to do it as a separate step. And that's the one that appears here on the blog page. So that's what the thumbnail image is. So let's go back into our settings here. So as you can see, this thumbnail is this image here. So set a thumbnail for your blog post that will appear on the main blog page if you are showing them there. Um, and the blog post URL. So Squarespace automatically uses your blog post title as your URL. Um, so how changing your morning routine will improve your mood. And then it also, if you've duplicated a post, um, it will add some weirdness to the end here to that title. So I always go in and I shorten this URL because this is kind of crazy long. So something like morning routine, improve mood. So without going into all the details, Google likes URLs that are shorter and make more sense than ones that are crazy long or have nonsense in them. So shorten up your post URLs to include your keywords. Um, and I mean, I usually do like between four and six words here, but you can dive into SEO research to, to dig into that more. Author, so it will default to whoever is logged in and working on this post first. But if you have other contributors on the site, you can change the author name to one of those. Source URLs are if you are pulling um, a post from somewhere else or um, to give further reading about something that you're doing or uh, yeah, I think those are the only cases that you would use this you can put a source URL here. So for example, if you are referencing an article um, and like summarizing an article, then you would put a post to that article at the bottom of your blog post. Now, in addition to that, you can kind of skip your post altogether. And on the main blog page, you can have the source URL um, be what the blog title links to. So instead of going to your post, if I toggled this on, it would go to whatever link we had put here. 
I rarely use these. Um, I am a big fan of creating my own unique content and I want to keep people on my website, which also helps SEO. So you may not have any use for these. And finally, the excerpt is a short, um, usually one sentence summary of what you're talking about. And it will, you can set it to appear on the main blog page. So we don't have it here, but if you had it set, it would appear underneath the titles um, and they are specific to each blog post. So I typically write this because it can show up in places um, in SEO sometimes as well and Pinterest. So I always write a little excerpt. Now, in addition here, the last thing in our options menu is a featured post. So this is when you are using a summary block, which is a type of block in Squarespace. So just like you add a text block or an image block, you can add something called a summary block and you can set it to only display featured blog posts. So it's a way to pull in blog posts and certain ones. So on my website, I actually use this. Let me show you here. So let's just go to custody price. So on my blog, the this is a summary boat. Sorry, this is a summary block where I have used my featured posts um, option. So these I've all toggled on featured post in the post settings, and I put them here. So these are some of my more popular blog posts, and I put them right up top when you land on my blog. So if you're in Squarespace 7.1, you can do this. In Squarespace 7.0, you can't add this to a blog page, but you can add it to um, any other type of page that's not a collection. So let's go back here. Uh, okay, so that's it for options. Next is SEO. So this is where you can encourage Google to serve up a specific title and description for your blog post. I typically leave the title off and just let Google pull my title from my blog post, but in some circumstances, you may want to switch out and have an SEO specific title. For SEO description, this is something that I try to write so that if my post shows up in Google search results, there is a little summary here that's using the keywords I'm using in my post and makes it compelling to click through. So, um, you know, something like this, these two changes to your morning routine are shown to improve your mood throughout the day. Um, click here to read more or something like that. So. Uh, there are some little details here about the SEO description, but I would recommend filling that out. Next up is a social image. So if you share your blog post on social media, so for example, if you're sharing it to Facebook, an image appears beside it. So your social sharing images for blog posts are the blog post thumbnails. So that image that we set here in options. If you want it to be something else, so you don't want it to be the thing that displays here on the main blog page, you can add a different image here to be your alternate social sharing image for this particular post. Share. So you can actually start an email draft about this blog post. So that kicks us over into email campaigns. And if we click on drafts, you'll see that it already started an email draft for us. So if you wanna easily send out a blog post to your mailing list, this is a great way to do it. Um, you can also um, play around with the settings here and maybe I'll do another video on email campaigns. It's a great feature in Squarespace. So let's go back to our blog. We'll pull up our little list here. We've got our blog page ready here and back into settings. So in addition to create the email draft, you can also connect social media accounts. And by connecting social media accounts, you can basically let Squarespace get information in from those accounts. So for example, some people have an Instagram block with an Instagram feed on their site, which is a great feature. That is through a connected account with Instagram that pulls in that information. You can actually push information out um, and you could push a blog post automatically to um, one of these accounts. Now, I don't use this feature because I like a little bit more control over how 
those posts are shared on social media. But if you want to try this out, you could hook up Facebook, for example, and just have it push out your post to Facebook when you publish it here. So definitely play around with that. Um, again, not a feature I use. I actually use um, a company called Missing Letter, and I'll put a link to that below. Uh, Missing Letter lets me automate sending out um, blog posts on a schedule. And I've seen some SEO growth from that. So that's the company I use. It is a paid service, but I think it's well worth it. Now, where were we? Sorry, blog. There's a lot to do here and settings. And finally, we have location. So this is only for you to use if you have a brick and mortar location. So if you have an office building, if you have a store, this is where you would put in your address if it's relevant to the post. So for example, if your post is about um, five ways to source milk glass and you have an antique shop, then you would drop in your business location here and it would be connected up. Um, I just work from my house, so I don't use this panel. So that is a walkthrough of the blog post settings. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your blog and with your Squarespace website.